Yeah, g'day and welcome back to this old lathe channel. Last week, I bought this lathe's motor under control of uh, Linux CNC, Mesa cards, and a VFD. And I just got a few little things to improve on there before I continue. But I got a question for you. I need your help. More about that later. Last week, the spindle was going on as soon as I came out of e-stop. That turned out to be an easy fix. I just had the cables to the enable pin of this Mesa card reversed. It has a polarity. I was trying to feed plus into the negative. Last week, I had the spindle set up with a very conservative acceleration and deceleration. Three seconds to accelerate and two seconds to decelerate. Well, one of my mates pointed out that that whole motor and drivetrain is obviously designed for instantaneous on and off because it used to just be controlled by relays. Basically, I can crank up the XL and D-cell until the VFD faults and then back it off a bit. Right, using just a blowdown gun and crawling into this space. Let's push this gearbox into its high gear. Well, I think I put this into back gear, but let's have a look. Yep, back gear. I was told off last week for running a chuck with nothing in it. Not sure if that's a thing, but oh well, I'll believe you. Okay, that should now be high speed. Oh, that's nice. Let's crank that up a bit. So here it's running at its lowest speed, 20 hertz. If I crank it up to its higher speed, which is 70 hertz, it accelerates cleanly and that works fine. But if I decelerate back down, I get a couple of errors by the looks of it. So it looks like I can't dump the energy fast enough. Okay, so I'm happy with the acceleration, but I still need to slow down the deceleration a bit on this. But in the meantime, let's see if we can get some feedback from the spindle encoder to the 7i85. And luckily, the Schoblin guys, when they created this machine, they actually wrote what each cable is. So this is Codeur, is the spindle encoder. Now, which is nice, except these colors don't match up to the ones on the wiring diagram. I'm supposed to have a, a dark brown, a light brown, no yellow, no green, and a black. So let's open up the headstock and see what's actually on the encoder. Okay, well that's not going to help me because the Heidenhain wiring terminates here and it's Schoblin wiring from there on in and they could have used any colouring. Heidenhain wiring is generally standardised. This is the pinout for a ROD 620. Doesn't look like Schoblin's continued on with the same colours, that's for sure. Ah, oh, but wait a minute. If this is a standard Heidenhain 12 pin plug, those pin positions will be standard and I can work out the function from the pin position. Now from Heidenhain, we can see that the indexing signal is called UA0 and then the A and the B are called UA1 and the UA2. Looking at the pinouts here, I'm looking for an index signal on pin 3, channel A, pin 5, channel B, pin 8, and then 5 volt supply will either be pin 2, pin 12, and earth, pin 10 or 11. I'm glad they left that cable long enough to reach all the way to the front here, that makes it easier. Alright, let's start off with the white one, which is kind of grubby now, but doesn't matter. So white should be a ground, so it should be nope, nope, okay. White is this one. I made a mirror image. I thought Heidenhain would be referring to the connector on the encoder, but nope, it's this one. Pin three is white. Pin three is my index, so that's gonna be white. Let's have a look at green.
Okay, that must be pin one. Okay, that makes no sense whatsoever, because that shouldn't be used. So pin one is the B signal, but it's the inverted B signal. So let's try gray. One, two, wait a minute, I thought I had that one. So this is pin three, I thought I already had three was being white. Okay, pin two was white. Pin two should be five volts, so that's white. Pin three is the index signal, should be gray. And the last one, yellow, should be the pin 10 or 11. Damn. Okay, so it's pin four. Okay, that's not great. Four out of the five signals I could find, although this one's questionable because it's the inverse B channel and not the normal one. But the ground signal's not on a pin it should be on. Maybe they've changed their pin out in the last 40 years. Right, so based on both wire colors and also the measured pinouts, I can't identify which is the encoder's positive, which is the negative, and which are the three index. Seeing as my troubleshooting equipment is a hacked computer power supply, a multimeter, and a toy oscilloscope. So given this, how do I find the positive and negative power pins of the encoder without blowing it up and killing it? In the meantime, I need to do a little household maintenance. Houses like this in Austria normally have central heating. So here in my basement, I got like a wood heater and a gas heater. And they of course have chimneys. So the exhaust comes up here. There's the second exhaust. And the chimney goes up out through, through the roof this way. So there's the chimney, and it needs to be swept once a year by a professional chimney sweep to prevent fires. That's a requirement. So my chimney sweep told me that, look, this door's not closing, this outer door. Now it does have this latch on it, but that doesn't seem to work. It's just all bent up. So he wants me to add some sort of a latching mechanism. That makes sense. Now the design needs to be at least as good as this one. Yeah, look at that fine piece of engineering, a wall plug some sort of bent over bolt or something, and then <laughs> that just holds it, but it works. So let's see if we can improve on that. So to make that new latching mechanism, let's start with my favorite material, which is Schaublin control panel. Hey, do you guys also find that all house and car maintenance always becomes due at the same time? And that time is always spring. Seems to be the way for me. This is from the scrap bin. I'll just bend it around here for the second bend. That looks fine. Right, so what do I need to drag up to the attic? I need the parts. Need some electrodes, magnets, gloves, angle grinder, helmet. Ah, damn, I forgot my ear defenders.
gloves. Okay, well, that was not a good way of rolling it. I'll need to make up another one, but I think plan B is gonna be get a clamp. Right, me versus welder, round two. This time I actually got a clamp. sketchy setup here. I'm having to run the earth in through this bar over the little clip and into the base metal. So let's see if that works. Well, no prizes for welding beauty there. For a door which only gets opened once a year, this will be fine. Right, enough of that. Let's get back to the shoveling. Mail time. Oh good, the last contactor I need. This one doesn't need any auxiliary contacts. And also, because it's not switching an inductive load, I don't need the, what is that, uh, diode resistor block thingy. Last week, I found that my little 2.4 amp 5 volt power supply wasn't working, so I did a bit of research. Now I went looking for the root cause of the problems there, and as is often the case of my problems, I found it right here in the intersection between ignorance and laziness. Yeah, it would have been smarter to have added up all the required currents before I bought it. Yeah, who would have thought, once you add up the current requirements of the brain, the encoders, and powering the smart serial connections to other boards, of which there are three. Well, it's more than 2.4 amps. So I've ordered a new power supply to replace it. This time 60 watts instead of 15. Mail time. Is that unbelievably perfect timing or what? I was just recording this section and it showed up. I think I might have to remove this cable run. Before I connect it up to the brain, I'll just check the output voltage. Okay, it's a little high. Just turn that down a bit. I'll go down to about 4.8 volts. That seemed to work fine. Okay, that's now good. I don't have any error lights showing up on the brain anymore. I'm just setting up my next Patreon live stream, and I thought I'd do it on how industry does the calculations for sizing a motor to a CNC machine and how that applies to us doing retrofits. So if you think that's something you might be interested in, please join the other awesome Patreons who support this channel and I'll be sending out an invitation to the live stream as soon as I've got it ready. Thanks a lot. Oh man, just finishing the edit when I saw this. Oh, what an idiot.
Oh, well, at least then I know what to do. 